Um, <laughs> what was the story? Oh, yes. Right, so I was having a night off. Um, and, of course, there's nothing lazier in the world than a safari guide, by the way. So we often, we always think that we're tired and we always think we deserve time off. There's very little in the world um, that is lazier. So I was being lazy and decided that I was going to have a nice night off. And then suddenly there was a knock on my door and there was a panicked sort of camp manager there saying you have to come and drive because there's been a complaint about this ranger and his guests were demanding another ranger. And the ranger in question who'd been complained about I knew to be one of the most professional, one of the most competent, one of the most sensitive and I just thought this, I mean he was twice the guide I ever was. So I thought this was a bit odd. Anyway, they took. He was just quite young, so he didn't really know how to handle. I think the, the these guests. So I went down and I met these people who I was going to take out in the morning. And this chap looked at me. You know, he was a kind of fellow who you immediately dislike on sight because he looks at you as if you are his servant, which I suppose is a guide. Some you are in some ways, but you know. By and large, people are quite interested in what you have to say if they've taken the time and trouble to come to a safari lodge. Anyway, this guy looks me up and down once. And he says, he was right from the east end of London. He says, is you our new, is you our new driver? So I said, um, well, I'm your new guide, yes. He says, right. Well, I came here, I came here to see a kill, right? I've seen kills on a TV. I came here to see a kill. I told my guide today, I said, look here, I want to see a kill. The guide says he's going to do his best to find a kill for us, right? Did he find a kill? No, he didn't. So I'll come back here and i say, where, where, where's the kill? Why didn't you show us a kill? And he says, well, he says, I, I think it's totally unacceptable. I come here, I pay all this money, and now I want to see a kill. I bring my girlfriend here, she also wants to see a kill, and we ain't seen a kill, we see nothing here. All we've seen is some elephants, some rhino, a couple of buffalo, and some lions lying on the ground. I want to see a kill. So I looked at this fellow and I said, well, there's some vultures coming off the ground there. That could be where that buffalo kill was. Just one second, I will get back to my story. Did you, well, you know, it's not unusual. It's very, I've been working in the bush now for close on 10 years. I've seen maybe three or four kills in my time. He says, oh, don't give me your stories. I don't care. I want to see a kill. And his girlfriend at this point, who has got more makeup, or more paint on her face um, than a sort of your average house. Uh, so, and she's also got, I think she's probably had the early, you know, Botox wasn't much of the rage back then, but she's had quite a lot of the early form of it. So her face was completely immobile. She was unable to move. And so through these lips that uh, the good Lord did not give her, she said, Oh, so I want to see a kill. I came here to see a kill. We haven't seen a kill. We need to see a kill. So I thought I understood what she meant. And I said, well, we'll do what we can in the morning. This was after the evening game drive. So off we went in the morning. And it was beastly hot. Beastly hot. We saw one Stienbock, one Diker, and that was all in the four and a half hours of game drive. Well, the red-faced, angry irritated East Ender I think left the lodge if I'm not mistaken that very day complaining deeply and he actually I think he did pay his bill